Now we move on to midpoint and distance. We're going to look at this both on a number line and on the coordinate plane. So the first formula that we need to look at is the midpoint formula. And the midpoint on a number line is equal to a plus b over 2. So you take your two coordinates, plug them into the a and b, and then work that out. That's going to give you the midpoint on a number line. The first question, finding the midpoint. Segment AB has endpoints at negative 4 and 9. What is the coordinate of the midpoint? You can see that we've already drawn this out on a number line. It's actually not necessary to do that because we have enough information from the question to be able to work it out with the formula. Again, make sure you choose the right formula. We're using midpoint and number lines. That's a plus b over 2. Plug in the two coordinates, and you're going to end up with negative 4 plus 9 over 2, which is going to give you either 5 over 2 or 2 and a half. I prefer that you leave your answers as fractions unless otherwise indicated. The next formula that you need to look at is the midpoint on a coordinate plane. In order to be able to do this, you're going to be given two ordered pairs. You're going to assign those ordered pairs the values x1 and y1, and then the other ordered pair will be x2 and y2. You're then going to plug those values into the midpoint on a coordinate plane formula, which is the quantity x1 plus x2 over 2, comma y1 plus y2 over 2. This is going to give you a third ordered pair, which will be your midpoint on that coordinate plane. This is going to help us to be able to do problem number 1b. So it says segment EF has endpoints E75 and F2-4. What are the coordinates of its midpoint M? Again, you can see that we've got a coordinate plane with the values on that plane. We actually don't need to do that because, again, we have enough information from the question to be able to work this out. So again, the first step is going to be choose the correct formula. And that's midpoint of a coordinate plane equals x1 plus x2 over 2, y1 plus y2 over 2. Take your ordered pairs and plug them in correctly. So we're going to say that x1 is 7 and x2 is 2. So we get 7 plus 2 over 2. Our y1 is 5, our y2 is negative 4, so we get 5 plus negative 4 over 2. That's going to give us an ordered pair of 9 halves 1 half, or four and a half, one half, and that's going to be our uh, solution for the midpoint on this coordinate plane. Our task in problem number two is going to be a little bit different than we had in problem number one. In this case, we're going to find an endpoint. So we're given a midpoint and one endpoint, and we have to find the second endpoint. Segment CD has an endpoint C, negative five, seven, and a midpoint M, negative 2, 1. What are the coordinates of its other endpoint D? Again, we've got the coordinate plane with everything marked out, but we don't need that. We can just use the formula to be able to solve this. Now, what you want to do here is, since we've got the midpoint, we're going to replace M subscript CP with negative 2, 1. We're then going to assign C as X1 and Y1. We're going to plug those in, and then we're going to do a little bit of a different process than what you've seen before. So we've got negative 2, 1 equals the quantity negative 5 plus x2 over 2 and 7 plus y2 over 2. Now, because this is an ordered pair, what we're going to do is we're going to break this into two separate equations. So all of the x's are going to go into one equation. All of the y's are going to go into a second equation. So we're going to take negative 2, which is the x-coordinate of our midpoint, and we're going to set that equal to negative 5 plus x2 over 2. We're going to take 1, which is the y-coordinate of our midpoint, and set that equal to 7 plus y2 over 2. We're going to work those out together uh, and find out what is the ordered pair that's, that is the endpoint for this problem. So since we've got on the right side of both equations, everything's being divided by 2, we've got to remove that denominator of 2. So again, how do you remove a denominator? You multiply. So we're going to, mul we're going to multiply everything in both equations by 2. 
That's going to leave us with negative 4 equals negative 5 plus x2. And then on the second equation, 2 equals 7 plus y2. We're then going to work these equations out like we normally would. We're going to add 5 to both sides in the first one. We're going to subtract 7 from both sides in the second one. And we're going to end up with x2 equals 1 and y2 equals negative 5. Put those in an ordered pair. So we know that d is the ordered pair 1, negative 5. So one of the things that you guys have already done in this chapter is to find distance on a number line. Now we're going to find distance on a coordinate plane. There are actually three ways of doing this. The first way, which is the actual distance formula, is probably the most complicated way of doing this. So we'll take a look at it because I want you to know what the formula is and I want you to be able to use it if you forget the other two methods. But it's probably going to be the hardest method to use or the most complicated method to use. Distance in a coordinate plane is d equals the square root of the quantity x2 minus x1 squared plus the quantity y2 minus y1 squared. Again, that's going to be probably the longest method of working this out, uh, so you may or may not want to use it. The second method is to use the Pythagorean theorem. So you should know by this point that the Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared when c is the hypotenuse of a right triangle. So what you can do is you can sketch out uh, the line on a coordinate plane and then draw a horizontal line and a vertical line from the two, from the two endpoints until they meet and that's going to give you a right triangle. You can then use the distance of the horizontal and the distance of the vertical as your a and your b to work it out. So an example of this is that you've got the points 7, 5, and 2, negative 4. And what we would do is we would figure out that we have distance of 5 uh, horizontally and a distance of 9 vertically. So we would plug those into the formula. 5 squared plus 9 squared equals c squared. 5 squared is 25. 9 squared is 81. Add those together, you get 106 is equal to c squared. And then to remove the square, you have to take the square root. That gives you a square root of 106, and that would be the distance on the, on the coordinate plane. The final way of doing it is what I call the quick, the quick method or the quick way of doing it. All you're going to do is you're going to stack your two, uh, your two ordered pairs. So we have 7, 5, and 2, negative 4. What's the distance between 7 and 2? It's 5. What's the distance between 5 and negative 4? It's 9. Square them both. 5 squared is 25. 9 squared is 81. Add them together. You get 106. And then you just know that you take the square root of that. And that's going to be your solution, the square root of 106. In problem number three, we're going to find distance using the quick method. So it asks, what is the distance between u, which is negative 7, 5, and v, which is 4, negative 3? I want you to leave your answer as a simplified radical if necessary. So again, stack these. So you have negative 7, 5 stacked on top of 4, negative 3. What's the distance between negative 7 and 4? It's 11. What's the distance between 5 and negative 3? 8. Square them both. You get 121 and 64. Add them together. That's 185. Take the square root, square root of 185. The square root of 185 cannot be simplified, so that's going to be your solution. The last question, problem number four, gives you a little bit more work on uh, finding distance. So the question is, on a zipline course, you are harnessed to a cable that travels through the treetops. You start at platform A and zip to each of the other platforms. How far do you travel from platform B to platform C, round to the nearest tenth? Well, I didn't put the illustration on here, but point B is negative 30, negative 20, and point C is negative 15, 10. So again, what we're going to do is we're going to stack these. Negative 30, negative 20 over negative 15, 10. 
What is the distance between negative 30 and negative 15? It's 15 units. What's the distance between negative 20 and 10? It's 30 units. So square both of them. 15 squared is 225. 30 squared is 900. Add them together. 225 plus 900 is 1125. Take the square root of that. And since we're looking for a distance in meters, we're actually going to go ahead and plug this into our calculator and find out that the square root of 1125 is approximately 33 and a half meters.